And uh, I, ha- I was going in a lot of different directions, had a lot of different thoughts for the church. And, you know, coming to uh, Alder, this is the Alders Church, Victor Outreach International Alders Church. So while I was getting ready, I was thinking, well, I, I better preach some, uh, you know, some Greek and Hebrew and, you know. And then that way when I leave, you know, they'll be like, wow, he's really deep, you know. And then I thought, well, no, maybe I better preach one of those uh, fiery messages where everybody jumps up and goes crazy and runs to the altar and they have a good time. They don't remember the message, but they just have a good time. You know, so I thought, well, maybe I'll preach, you know, one of those messages. And then the Lord didn't give me any of those messages. He just pretty much changed everything. And, and what I come with tonight is simplicity and substance. Just simplicity and substance. And when Pastor Al came up here and he opened up the service and he said that, you know, there's some of you that have to leave something here tonight at the altar, that, that confirmed that I'm on the right page. I'm on the right page. Simplicity and substance. John MacArthur, he said this, the simplicity of the gospel gives what the complexity of human wisdom promises, but never delivers. Father, we come before you tonight, and Lord, we thank you for your beautiful presence that is here right now, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to fill this place. Just let your anointing saturate every heart, every mind, God. I pray that you would use me, God, just as an instrument in your hand, God, a tool, God, a mouthpiece from your throne, For every person, God, that hears this message tonight, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, just have your way, and I'll give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen and amen. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 10. The book of Mark, chapter 10. I got to say it again, man. You guys got a beautiful church here. Beautiful, beautiful church. I get so jealous when I walk into the sanctuary, when I walk into the front doors. So half the time while I was sitting over there, I was asking the Lord to forgive me for my jealousy so I could preach, you know. (laughs) Jesus. Mark chapter 10. Give me a loud amen when you have it. And let's begin reading at verse 17. The Bible says this, as Jesus started on his way, A man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not be, you shall not defraud and honor your father and your mother. In verse 20, it says this. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. The title of this message tonight is The Man with No Name. The Man with No Name. The rich young ruler was was a man that he had everything that he needed in this life. But he wanted to make sure that he had all that he needed for the next life. So he asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? What must I do? To inherit eternal life. And Jesus said, go sell, give, then come follow. Go sell, give, then come follow. The Bible said that this young man's features fell and he went away sad. The young man is not mentioned by name. Only the rich, young ruler. And why? It's very, very simple. It's because he never came back after the Lord told him what to do. It's very simple. The man with no name associated with Jesus talked 
with Jesus, came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, listen, just sell what you have, give to the poor, and then come follow me. His face frowned. He left sad because he would not let go of what he had, what he possessed. He wouldn't let go. He never came back to Jesus. Now, the question tonight is, does the Lord know us by name? Does, does the Lord know us by name? Or does he know us by that one that just can't let go? The one that's always wanting but never giving. The one that's always asking but never listening. The one that's always watching but never doing. The one that always gives advice but never takes it. Come on, somebody. See, do we have a name or is there a description that describes us? The rich young ruler was known by a description because he could not let go of what he had. Now, what is it that you have? What is it that we have that, that stops, stops us from giving God our all and all? Now, it could be wealth. Maybe we have some wealthy people here tonight. It could be wealth. It could be a relationship that isn't edifying. Come on, somebody. It could be fear of uncertainty. It could be the love of the world. The rich young ruler just couldn't let go. And why? Because he focused on what he had to give up, and he couldn't see what he, what he was about to gain. He focused on what he had and not what he was about to get. Jesus offered him life. Jesus offered him a future. Jesus offered him to, to come follow me, be a part of my ministry, be a part of, of what's taking place, be a part of how God is using me. He invited him to, to, to join his life. The Bible says in John 3, 16, we all know the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And then we know John 10, 10, the Bible says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see, this young man couldn't comprehend. Or understand that by, by letting go, he was actually unlocking the window of abundance upon his life. Far more than what he could ever have let go. I have come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now here's a little bit of Greek for you. That word abundant, New Testament, it means exceedingly over and above. It means, listen to this, it means more than necessary. More than necessary. It means extraordinary and surpassing. Now, there's a commentator by the name of John Gill, and he says this about this particular scripture. He says, Christ came that his people might have eternal life with more abundant evidence of it, stronger faith in it, and a more lively hope of it. Besides life, they might have an abundance of grace from Christ. All spiritual blessings, a fullness of joy, glory, and happiness. You see, abundance of grace. All spiritual blessings, a fullness of joy, glory, and happiness. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and running over. The, the rich young ruler could not understand how he could gain by giving. Gain by giving. Now, me and Arlene, we've been serving the Lord for over 28 years now. And <clears throat> I've been around thousands of Christians. Christians. And, and, and many of them are, are, are so grateful 
and, and thankful and cheerful and happy and always ready and willing to do what, whatever God wants from them. Those are the best people to be around. Come on, somebody. Huh? But I've also been around many Christians that are never grateful. Never thankful, cheerful, never happy. or They're, they're never ready and willing to do what God wants them to do. Now, now, now you got to understand this, that both have given their lives to the Lord. These are Christians. They've both given their lives to the Lord. They're, 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 they're both a part of the, of the family of God. Both a part of the, the same ministry. They sit under the same vision, the same preachings, the same teachings. Both have access to the same windows of opportunity. But there's those that are never fulfilled. Never have joy or, uh, are, the, are, are the presence of the Lord within their life. And, 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 and why is that? Why is it that you can be with a group of Christians and, and man, they're just so grateful. They love God. They love the Lord. And they're happy. They might not have everything that they, that they want or desire, but they have everything they need. And they're grateful for what God has done within their life. But then you come around this side of the church and you have those that are never grateful, never thankful. And God has blessed them and they're still not grateful. But they're sitting under the same ministry, the same preachings, the same teachings, the same God, the same calling. Why is there a difference? And I'll tell you why. Because one group still hasn't let go of something that they're holding on to. You see, this young man had everything. He had everything. He was a young man of wealth. But he could not let go of what he had. Just like that, that group. You know, they're still holding on to something. It could be hurt. Many of us have been hurt. It could be resentment, unforgiveness, anger, pride, jealousy, envy. I had all those things walking into the church. I'm just, I'm, I'm living, I get mad sometimes. I say, God, why do you spoil other people and I don't get spoiled? Why do you open up the windows on heaven on San Diego and Bakersfield? It's 110 degrees and nobody wants to come outside. There are countless Christians today that are not living out a fulfilled Christian life because they are still holding on to that one thing that they can't let go of. Not realizing that by letting go, we gain so much more. You, listen, you can't grow until you let go. You can't grow until you let go. Christ came that his people might have eternal life and a more abundant life. Now, I'm just going to go over a few things that this young rich ruler missed out on. First of all, he missed out on the abundance of grace. This is what he, this is what he passed up by, by not letting go. He missed out on abundance of of grace. Grace is unmerited favor from God. In other words, grace is something that God gives to you and I, even though we don't deserve it or have earned it or have even tried to work for it. Huh? It's unmerited favor from God. That's grace. God's favor is consistent and, it's, and it consists of, of special benefits and blessings. You see, when Christ died on Calvary, the perfect sacrifice was presented, making it possible for all who believe to enjoy God's favor. And this young man couldn't understand that his money couldn't buy this. He couldn't buy this. This is something that was offered to him, but because he couldn't let go, he couldn't have the, un, un, he couldn't have the favor of God Upon his life. Listen, I want you to know that favor isn't fair. Sometimes. Huh? God is always looking for those ones that are willing to let go. God is always looking for those ones that will take that next step. 
He's always looking for those ones that will follow in the right direction. He's always looking for those ones that say, yes, let's make it happen. He's always looking for the ones that even say, I don't understand it. I don't see it. But if you see it, I'm ready to follow. He's always looking for those. This young man could not let go of what he had. So he missed out on favor. He missed out on what God was giving him. Another thing he missed out on, we read in the commentator that he missed out on all spiritual blessings. Now, these spiritual blessings consist of these. Justification, peace, pardon, adoption, sanctification, and eternal life. This man with no name passed up a full pardon. That's what he passed up. He passed up a full pardon. Now, some of you are saying, well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, those of you that have been in the system before. It never leaves you. It doesn't matter how much God has done within your life. It doesn't matter if you look different now, you act different now, you're saved now, you love God now. When it comes down to the application, it doesn't change. It's always with you, your past. But see, right here, this rich young ruler, he passed up a pardon. He passed up a remission of consequence, exemption of convictions, forgiveness of offenses. Jesus said to let go of what you have so I can outpour what I have. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. This young rich ruler passed up a full pardon upon his life you see when we accept what Jesus offers we become a brand new person that's why I thank the Lord today that I'm a new person my wife said we were messed up on gangs and alcohol and drugs and we had a terrible marriage that was the old man that was the old man it has nothing to do with me today I am a brand new man. I am a new creation. God has given me a full pardon upon my life. But this young man wouldn't let go of what he had. So he bypassed and he missed out on a pardon. This rich young ruler, he missed out on joy. A fullness of joy. I think I lost my voice at the hotel in the AC. Yeah, we stood, we stood in the hotel all day today. Ate junk food. Laid on the bed eating with the AC on 65, you know. He, rich, he, he, he passed up fullness of joy. See, joy is, is, is great pleasure. It's happiness. Satisfaction, delight, it's contentment. Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalms 30 verse 11 says, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. You see, when we learn how to let go and let God, when we fully surrender heart, mind, soul, and future to the Lord, there's a joy that, that, that is given to us by God that there is nothing in the world can come close to. You see, this young man thought that he would give up joy and completeness by giving to the Lord. By letting go of what he had, he thought he was going to lose out. But he missed out on, on joy that only God can give. The Bible says it's a joy that's inexpressible. In other words, you can't even explain it to people at times. There's no can that could give it to you. There's no line that could give it to you. There's no bottle that can give it to you. There's no girl that can give it to you. There's no guy that can give you this type of joy that is speaking about right here. When Christians learn how to let go, 
of that vice that has them limited. They begin to experience satisfaction in their walk with God. I always say this, if anybody should have joy, it should be us. Huh? If anybody should have joy, it should be you and I. It doesn't matter what we go through and face in life. We're still not this, as bad as we were. Huh? It doesn't matter what happens in our walk with God today. We're still going to heaven. And the Bible says that joy comes in the morning. Regardless of what we face in life today, it's all just a season. Seasons come and seasons go. It's sad when you see sad Christians. Huh? It's sad. There's some, there, even right now when I'm saying this, I think of some people in our church. They just have that, that face. Come on, somebody. You know that face? They have that face. And even when I'm preaching under the power of the Holy Spirit, I see them in their chair with that face. And I don't know if a pastor should think like this or even mention things, but sometimes I feel like just, just getting off the pulpit, just getting off the pulpit and, and going into the audience and just, you know, you know like, like if the Lord will blind everybody else and give me just one minute just to, just to remind them that Jesus changed their life and they have every reason to have joy. What can you be facing that will cause you to look like that? We have Jesus within our lives. We are a new creation tonight. All things are past. Behold, all things have become new. We have a future. We have a plan. We have a promise. God has given us a calling. So sometimes I feel like getting that face. Because I don't understand how you could be sad. You could be in prison right now. You could be in jail right now. He passed up a fullness of glory. Now right here, this glory, it doesn't mean what you might think it means. It means great honor and admiration. This is what this young, rich ruler passed up. Now today, you know, has you got a, a quick question. Let me catch my breath. Has anybody ever come to you and you say, man, you're doing so good. Huh? I, I am so proud of you. You have come a long way. I remember how you used to be, David. I remember. Huh? I remember how you used to be. Huh? You've come a long way. God has done a miracle upon your life. And, and you make me so proud. And, and I'm honored that you're my son or my daughter or my nephew or my niece, my husband or your wife. Have you heard those words lately? I've heard those words. And this is what this young rich ruler passed up. Because, see, when I came to the Lord, I never heard those words. See, my wife, boy, she looks all like, you know, ooh, she's nice, you know. Huh? Before we gave our lives to the Lord, even though I was lost in alcohol and drugs, she needed Jesus more than I did. I'll be, I'll be completely honest. We're being honest tonight. Huh? Because she was like, you know, really, really mean and angry and bitter. Hurt. You know. You know that type of anger like, man, she might stab me tonight. Huh? I, I mean, listen, well, I remember one, one morning I woke up, and I shared this with the marriage class one time, I think. I, w I woke up one morning, and I was, in, I was in the living room of our house, and I was passed out on the floor. On the floor. And when I woke up, I just remember waking up, and I was, I was right there on the floor, 
and I woke up. You know, when you wake up after a whole night of cocaine and alcohol, and, and you just have one of those killer headaches, and your mouth is dry, and all you want is some water. You know, you just want to be able to get up and walk to the kitchen, get some aspirins or water, or another beer, whatever, you know. And, and I remember I, I got up, and I looked, and I go, dang, what happened? Because there was blood all over the wall. Blood. N not a drama, real blood <laughs> on the wall. And then I looked and I was saying, oh, man, what happened here? And then I, I started to, <laughs> and then I was going, and then I had blood all over me, dried up, dried blood. Then, you know, I found out just a few minutes later that she got one of those iron skillets. <laughs> Come on, somebody. She was, she needed Jesus. I was a hurting soul, and she was hitting me with the iron skillet when I was already passed out. I didn't hear those words, man. I'm proud of you, man. You, you've come a long way, and I'm glad that you're my husband. I never heard those words. But listen, when Jesus came into my life, when the Lord set me free from the man that I was at one time, all that changed. And now, you know, even right now, she's filming me. She says it's for Facebook Live, but it's not because I catch her at nighttime just watching it over and over. <laughs> I tell her, listen, you got to be careful, man, because that's a sin. You got to put God first, not me. Your heart has to be with God first. I'll pray for you, sister, but you got to calm down and relax. See, this young ruler... He passed this up. He passed this up. All because he couldn't let go of what he had. And sometimes that's how we are in the church. God says, listen, just let it go. My hand is a lot bigger than your hand. Just let go what you have in your hand. And you're going to find out that there's so many blessings that I have for your life that your money can't buy. Lastly, he passed up a fullness of happiness. Happiness is, is satisfied, content with life. Content. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud and honor your father and your mother. Teacher, I declare all these I've kept since I was a boy. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. And he said, just one thing, the simple, simplicity, just one thing. That you lack. Go sell what you have. Give to the poor. And come follow me. At this the man's face fell. Went away sad. Because he had great wealth. The man with no name walked away. With disappointment. On his face. So much disappointment. That it caused his face to frown. Now I thank God tonight. That you and I. We don't have to walk around like that no more. Come on somebody. Maybe you walked in tonight like that. But we don't have to walk around with our faces frowning anymore. As a matter of fact, a matter of Bible fact. Look what Leviticus says in chapter 26, verse 13. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so you would no longer be slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so that you can walk with your heads held high. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so that you can walk with your heads held high. Not signifying pride, but signifying, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He picked me up. 
just in time. Listen, I don't think you hear me tonight. We are able to walk with our heads held high, no longer looking at the floor in shame, no longer looking away in guilt, no longer looking as life has beat us down. Jesus has changed our life. So it doesn't matter where we go and who we're around. We're able to walk into that place knowing that we are a new creation. Jesus did change our lives. We can walk with our heads held high. I don't want to be known by a description. I want God to know my name. I'm willing to let go and follow Jesus. There's things that we have to let go. Our ministry is expanding more than ever before. Not just here in San Diego, but all over the world. It's expanding like never before. But when you hear our founder, Pastor Sadi, say there's a shortage of leaders, he's talking about you and I. You and I. That's why we need men, women, couples, young people that let go and let God. So that we can continue to fulfill our, our vision of not only reaching here in this beautiful city, but reaching the world. Now before I open up the altar, let me just say this. Can you imagine if that rich young ruler came back? Can you take a moment and just imagine if he came back? First of all, we, we, we would have known his name. We, he would have been named. I believe he probably would have been written about as a, a rich man that gave it all to follow Jesus. Second, I believe we would have probably read in the, in the word about the great works this man did when he returned and followed Jesus. Third, I believe that his name would have been used in the word as an example to others of what takes place when we let go of what we have and gain what God has for us. Can you imagine if he came back? We, we pro probably would have been reading great exploits. He probably would have been used as an example. Maybe Jesus would have even had a parable about him. Just maybe we, there would have been a study about him. How a rich man gave all that he had. And how the Lord abundantly blessed his life. That would have been nice. But what about our story? What about our story? How's our story going to play out? Are we going to be the one that just holds on? Just holds on. You could walk out of these doors tonight sad. Because I believe every one of us has something that we got to give up tonight. There's something that we have to surrender to the Lord bypassed and miss out on all the spiritual blessings that God has for you. If you were to name it today, I would say that I'm a, I'm a Bogart in Christ. Huh? You ever hung around people that say, man, that's a Bogart, right? He wants everything. That's what I am in Christ. I want everything that God has for me. And if it means humbling myself, say, Lord, I got this problem, I have this problem, I have this problem, I need to let it go so that I could receive all that you have. And that's the first thing I'm going to do. If I was sitting under this preaching right now, I would be the first one at the altar this evening. God wants to bless you. He's blessing, he's blessing the ministry already. He's blessing San Diego already. This church is a model church for the world today. A model church for the world. 
for Victory Outreach International. This church is, is, is directing many of our churches right now. You guys are blessed. But some of you are sitting here in the blessed land and missing out on what God has for you. All because you don't want to let go. So tonight as we sing this song, I'm not going to have a long altar call. You say, Pastor, that's me. I got to let go. Just come to the front. We're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to have his way.